Our next guest is a social activist who, since 2011, has been fighting against a very controversial figure of Zwarte Piet, who is the Santa's helper in the Netherlands. Um, his uh, organization, Kick Out Zwarte Piet, has actually been listed as um, a terrorist on a terrorist ass assessment um, document by the national intelligence. Here to tell us more about it is Jerry. When I look at this country, this is what I see. A land full of potential. A land that's waiting for us to fulfill our dreams. It's like a canvas, it's empty. And I feel like all of us will have a chance to make something beautiful out of it for the common future. But when this country look at me, mostly when my name is called, this is what the country see. A violent black man, a person who's troublemaker, um, and even our group has been said, you know, labeled as terrorists. And it makes it very difficult to move from one side to the other. But when you ask me, how do I see myself? <laughs> I'm just an ordinary man trying to pose for Instagram. <laughs> I'm a poet, I'm a father, and I'm a human rights activist. That is also me. My whole contribution is, my whole being is to provide and do my part in the black liberation. The struggle of black people is something that touches my heart and I'm, I've dedicated nearly my whole life since very young to it. But also when we see, you see when you call yourself human rights activist, it shouldn't be only about yourself. And to me, the struggle of the people of Palestine lives within me. And I always be vocal about the apartheid condition of the Palestine people. I respect Israel's right to a statehood and I will even fight for it, just not at the expense of peaceful Palestinian statehood. The right to equal equality of women, I don't even understand why we have to discuss this. I mean, it doesn't make sense. But at the same time, we celebrated 100 years of voting right for women. It just, it was for white women. Men got to do better, white women got to do better as well. Same thing goes, I, I do not think, you know, that I respect freedom. And when you respect freedom, I feel like, you know, you got to be solid there with all type of groups who are facing struggle, um, who are going through all this life uh, experience, challenges. One of the things is we started a foundation called Netherlands Vote Better, the Netherlands will get better. I hope so. And a foundation that focuses on future without racism and exclusion. We believe that this can be achieved when we recognize our slavery past and of, of course the heritage of what has left behind, the wounds that it has left behind. But we have made up some of the things that we feel like if we get that out of the way, we can really, you know, make a step towards the future. Now, one of it is education. The fact that Dutch slavery and colonial power have never been discussed in depth in primary and secondary education leads to lack of knowledge and empathy in society. This is why, why that is one of our goals, education. Our first step towards an inclusive education is working together with the city government. Prior to the last election, they signed our manifest to make education in Amsterdam equally accessible for every child. And believe it, we are going to we are going to hold them accountable for it. And also, I think that we are committed to organizing an annual commemoration and celebration of the abolition of slavery in a respectful and fitting manner with respect to the descendants. Togetherness and unity is something that we will center ourselves around and we feel like this country is really moving behind and it's time to look into the future. Bye bye, Swatu Pit. Uh, we believe it's time to say goodbye to this friend of many Dutch people. His appearance refers directly to the Dutch history of colonialism and slavery. He was a school teacher from Amsterdam, Jan Schenkman, who first introduced the character of Swatu Pit 
in an 1850 book called Santa Claus and His Servant. The servant was black. The character, as you can see, is nothing short of a minstrel show. It is dehumanizing and reminds us of the painful Dutch history which is hidden in plain sight from the public. Swarte Piet is part of the Western culture of dehumanizing black people. It's nothing new, although many Dutch people think Swarte Piet is special. There has always been protest. This is a, what you are looking here is a protest in the 90s, where a lot of old people, as you can see, went into the streets to protest. A lot of them were spit on, a lot of them were cursed at, and there has always been people protesting, even during World War, Second World War, there were protests against Swarte Piet. Imagine that. And it hasn't moved us where we want it to be. So in 2011, me and myself, together with some youngsters uh, who were late 20s, early 20s, we came together and we said, this has to stop. And we started the movement, and it is called Swarte Piet's Racism, or Black Piet's Racism. Now, one of the things we have to realize is we are not only fighting Swarte Piet, we are fighting institutional racism. What does that mean? That means that the police who are supposed to protect us, you are looking at my back there. They are, as many, in many cases, shown to be the worst enemy we can have. But not only the police. We are seeing the media itself. And I will read this. Recently, we have been seeing a positive shift report about us in the media. However, the biggest newspaper in the country, The Telegraph, has raging war against us, our movement, since it became national. The title on this is The Danger of a Radical Agenda. Well, all we are asking for is a celebration that does not dehumanize, that does not exclude children, but a celebration that includes all Dutch children and population so we can have a national tradition instead of a national shame. Thank you.